If I may come in here, someone would say so yes. much magnanimity as well. So you bring a total stranger from another party and then you make him uh, acting PDP chairman and then later on substantive PDP chairman. But that's not the story making the rounds. The story making the rounds is that uh, the deputy governor sponsored the re-election bid of Governor Elechi, uh, then uh, substantive chairman of the PDP, and it was in an agreement that he became the deputy governor of Ebony State. Is that true or not? It is absolutely untrue. There is no such agreement, and he did not. How can a person, how can a private citizen be sponsoring a governor who was already in office and going to his second term? What kind of, uh, it's illogical. So there is no such substance. If anything, it is the governor who, ha who uses the, uh, the, his office to empower his deputy when he hadn't become deputy governor with so many uh, jobs in the state. There are so many and they are already... So how come so it is then, uh, Mr. Eni, if I may ask you, how come it is then that the deputy governor of the state happens to be closer to the powers in Abuja than be? Well, that is, a, that is a question that I'm not able to answer, but uh, uh, because I would be able to speak for the people in Abuja. But I can tell you that a part of the, the thing is that the people in Abuja, namely, first of all, His Excellency uh, Senator Anim Pius Anim, has a grouse with Chief Martin De Lechi over the succession plan. Because of that, the, was the deputy governor showed the desire to challenge his boss. He found a willing ally in the SGF, and they sold to Abuja the dummy that uh, Chief Elechi is a uh, second term and outgoing governor that he is weak, that he is unpopular, that he has no followership, that um, the important thing compromising processes and procedures guiding uh, primaries and electoral offices in, in PDP and now sidetracked Governor Elegy. Because of that, supporters, many supporters, the mainstream supporters of Governor Elegy defected to the Labour Party. Chief Elechi has remained in the Labour Party, sorry, in the, in the PDP, while many of his supporters have been, actually, have actually, gone that's to where, uh, uh, the uh, That's where I wanted party. to come in. So uh, uh, just hold on a minute. So he, uh, yes. Mr. Eni, hold on a minute, because uh, one of the allegations yes. is, uh, well, you call it a slip, is, uh, well, that's my question. Is he now a member of the Labour Party? Because one of the allegations of the PDP against the governor is that, uh, well, he's uh, supporting the Labour Party in Ebony State. He is a member of the People's Democratic Party and the leader of PDP in Ebony State. Oh, let me let me take from the uh, let me take from the Anambra won. example. He then, uh, is he a friend of uh, of the Labour Party in the state? He is not a friend of Labour Party. He does not support the Labour Party, but they are linked. Does he him get support Labour from the Labour Party? A Sorry. moment here. Let me bring this in again. Does he get support from a Boni Labour Party? Uh, the Labour Party is not. Uh, uh, part of his uh, political platform. He is campaigning for the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Maybe you didn't get my question. I'll, I'll, I'll put the question the, to you again. The, the, A moment the, here. The yes. Labour Party in Ebony State. Yes. Do they or are they supporting the governor, Martin Elechi? As citizens of Ebony State, whether they are in Labour Party, whether they are in APC, whether they are in APGA, a, a cross-section of Ebony citizens are supporting Governor Martin Elegi. You remember that once somebody becomes a governor, he is no longer the governor of one party, though he emerged under a political platform. So yes, there are many members, many Ebony citizens from across the political uh, spectrum who are supporting him. Some of them could be members of the Labour Party. So that is not the issue. I can tell you that he's been accused of uh, working with Labour Party. Tomorrow they accuse him of working with APC. The next day they accuse him of working with Africa. 
Because and so on and so forth. I, I really hope and you can son, get me here. Because son, before the now, the as of 2011 and even before 2015, uh, the, he's always been sir? a staunch PDP member. There's never been any doubt as to where his uh, loyalty or his allegiance lie. But now as we speak, uh, the talk about his allegiance towards Labour Party is stemming from especially after the primaries, which uh, didn't go well with some other people of the PDP, isn't it? Exactly. That is uh, what we are saying. It is simply invented of late because of the movement of his supporters who felt aggrieved and cheated by the back bastardization of the rules of procedure, rules of engagement, guiding the process of primaries, who moved to other parties. And so they are linking him with uh, those parties, and especially because his son is contesting the election under the Labour Party. And so they believe, how can a governor be on seat and his son is contesting the election under another party? But I want you to answer that question. Him. How can I, it be? How can I, that be? If that... If I'm a father, I'm a leader of a political party in my state, and my child decides to fly the flag of another political party in that same state, doesn't that tell someone that uh, uh, I'm, well, tacitly supporting that particular party? Well, the issue of political party membership in a plural society, in a multi-party democracy, is such that anybody can be in any party he or she chooses. Regardless of the affinity between family members, between husband and wife, there is no law that says that a family, that a husband must be in the same party with his uh, wife, and so on and so forth. And in our part of the country, the, in the First Republic, the famous uh, Ikoku family, S.G. Ikoku family, contested the election with his son. His son was in a different party. He himself was in a different party. They contested the election, and his son defeated him. That is Nigeria. And that is multi-party democracy at work, so that people are free. That is, it does not mean that once you become uh, a member of another party that you should necessarily be enemies. It means that people are making free choice. That is why the, 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 the slogan in Ebony is freedom. The PDP did not allow them to exercise the right of choice in determining the person who will fly the flag of the party. And because of their grounds, they decided to move. Many of them, that is. All right, Dr. Eni, we, 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 we have party. to wrap this up in a few minutes. Could you tell us? Uh, there are comments credited to the governor where he said uh, he was talking to, I think, some uh, Ezekuna youths that people are planning to impeach him and that if they impeach him, he will relocate to his house. Is he bothered about this impeachment move? Well, I can tell you that the, the governor is very calm for uh, about two reasons. One is that by his nature, he believes that ultimately right will overcome wrong. That is one. Two, the whole thing that is uh, been making the round so far, I emanating from the news media, there is no communication yet. So it's not even definite whether the House, the splinter group, because the House is not properly constituted, the splinter group, whether they will eventually make formal communication with him. And I can tell you that the governor sees the struggle not as his, he sees it as the soul of Ebony State being at stake, and that it is Ebony people who will determine what happens. He is not, he did not call himself to become governor. The people invited him, and it is the people, not at his prompting, not at his uh, indication, that moved to another platform to actualize All right, Dr. their Ali. own political destiny. Is, so, is he available for service to be served this impeachment notice? Of course, he's available he's in, within Nigeria. He's, uh, he's uh, been attending various uh, functions. Even the, the, the youth you said he addressed, he's been doing that. He's, uh, he, he's not in any way in hiding. And so, but what we are saying is that it is possible that the House has even realized that it is not properly constituted. Remember, and this is important, remember that just about a week ago, the House vacated the uh, positions 
of about now totally six members, meaning that going by Section 91 of the uh, Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which puts the minimum number of persons of vulnerable members that can constitute a, a House of Assembly in Nigeria, the minimum number as 24 and the maximum as 40. It is possible that following the vacation of the seats of six persons, that the House all right, Dr. Annie, I, I think the signal is there. That, that has the have realized that they have oh, thank no you for coming out this morning. Dr. Onyekachi Annie is the Chief they Press Secretary to Ebony State Governor. Well, we will pose some of those questions to the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Honorable Chukuma Wanzuka, if he eventually makes the program. We did invite him, but at the moment, he's not available to respond, to tell us what is going on there. Well, that's it for that segment. It's time now for us to flip over to where Gimba Omar is for another look at the headline news.